Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stefan Simon. I'm director of Yale's Institute for the Preservation of Cultural Heritage here on West Campus, an institute which is cutting across the kaleidoscopic academic landscape at Yale, working alongside Yale's magnificent and rich collections, Center of British Art, Peabody Museum, the Beinecke, the University Art Gallery, and with faculty and students from all departments, from engineering to art history, from chemistry to religious studies, from business to law. All for one aim, to enhance sustainable preservation of cultural heritage, interpretation, and access in service to the global conservation community. So welcome to Yale, and welcome to New Haven. By the way, the city and university of Dean Keller, one of the famous monuments men who were trying to rescue and protect cultural heritage in the Second World War. I thank you all for accepting our invitation, joining us here in the Second World Shop Workshop on Culture and Crisis, co-hosted again with the Victoria and Albert Museum London under the UNESCO patronage. Let me briefly talk a little bit about the who, the what, and the why of today's workshop. The ongoing destruction and loss of cultural heritage in North Africa and the Middle East remains a cause for global concern and condemnation. At our first workshop on culture and crisis in London almost exactly a year ago, we have discussed not only the extent of loss in cultural heritage, but also the impact of this, of these war crimes, as Irina Bokova says, on the local and global society and their ability to recover and forgive. This week, the eighth United Nations Global Colloquium of University Presidents will be held at Yale, convened on behalf of UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. Presidents and faculty members from 30 international universities have arrived or are arriving to attend. This year's program takes the team preservation of cultural heritage, focusing on issues of key importance to societies, universities, and major museums worldwide that are also highly ranked on the United Nations and UNESCO's agenda. The workshop on culture and crisis is one of many satellite events to the UNGC, and we hope it may inform it on identifying priorities, setting out a pathway for the academic community to better collaborate for the preservation of cultural heritage around the globe. Our co-hosts from the Victoria and Albert Museum, Vernon Rapley and Martin Roth, who have been with us in this undertaking from the very first minute, realizing the important role museums can play in this field, um, which is extending way beyond museum walls. In his concluding marks, Martin Roth, the director of the VNA, said, there will be a second step. This is the beginning. And here we are again, exchanging and sharing information, learning from each other, and seeking solutions to some of the most urgent challenges which our, our cultural heritage is facing today. Also, this workshop is held under UNESCO patronage, and we are looking forward to hear its director general, Madame Irina Bokova, tonight addressing the issue of culture and crisis in a public lecture in our School of Management. I would also like to use this opportunity to thank my colleagues in the Institute for Preservation of Cultural Heritage here on West Campus, especially in the Office of International Affairs and around Yale, a hundred colleagues or more have been working for months to set this United Nations Global Colloquium on track, organize a myriad of satellite events, lectures, experimental projects and art installations, panel discussions and workshops. So we have quite some exciting days ahead, I think, and not every day the UN Secretary General comes to campus, and not every day we can hear him speak about a topic so close to our hearts, the preservation of cultural heritage. Most importantly, however, I would like to say that this workshop is about you, who came to join us from around the world, who are ready to share your knowledge and expertise with us. For you, who come from universities, research institutes, museums, I'm very happy to welcome representatives from ICROM and ICOMOS, both advisory bodies to the World Heritage Convention, from the State Boards of Antiquities, for example, in Mali and Nigeria, key international players in preservation, like the Getty Conservation Institute, the World Monument Fund, the US State Department, the Smithsonian Azor, NGOs like Indian Pride Project or SIAC in our discussion on culture and crisis today on West Campus. For many of you, this has not been easy. Many of you can just reserve a ticket online, jump on a plane and travel the world. And, and we often tend to forget how privileged we are in the Western Hemisphere 
and how this may shape our view on the issues we are dealing with. In London last year, some of you may remember, I pledged to give especially those colleagues a better voice who are, in my opinion, the true monuments, men and women, who are defending our common cultural heritage in the first line on the ground. We made progress. You came from us, from Brazil, Chile, I hope I don't forget a country, China, Czech Republic, Ethiopia, France, Ghana, India, Italy, Japan, Jordan, Korea, Mali, Nigeria, Peru, Poland, South Africa, Sweden, Tanzania, Turkey, the UK, the US, not from my home country, Germany, uh, but from everywhere else. And, but we are still not quite there, I think. There are still those who could not join us for various, and I have to say, often outrageous regions, reasons. Colleagues from countries like Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Yemen. We will hear some of their stories by video and in PowerPoints, and I'm aware how much frustration this has cost you and us, and how nerve-wracking these days of planning and waiting were. But I want to say we have no choice but to continue this struggle if we want to be an agora for discussing how to better preserve cultural heritage. We must listen to your voice. For me, the last point in last year's London Declaration on Culture and Crisis is a very important one. It calls us to support cultural heritage professionals in countries suffering or at risk of suffering cultural crisis and appeals to every decision maker, organization, and individual to be generous, innovative, and dynamic in their support. So cultural heritage is the essential record of human existence and identity. It is the thread of continuity for which people search when the rhythm of everyday life has been shattered. We know that many of us devoted our careers to the preservation of cultural heritage. We know how, how important it is. The preservation of cultural heritage is arguably one of the grand challenges of the contemporary world, similar to other grand challenges such as world health and environmental sustainability. And, and why here at Yale? I think universities are particularly well positioned to forge an, uh, an effective response to that, uh, these challenges. We are working in a very interdisciplinary, well, hopefully in a transdisciplinary setting. I call this once a kaleidoscopic landscape here at Yale. And we are committed to research and teaching. And we have wonderful students who came to Yale to learn how to make the world a better place. We want them also to learn why our cultural heritage deserves to be protected. And this is why we chose to host this colloquium here at Yale. In that sense, please allow me to finish by quoting our president, Peter Salovey, who said, the future of the past is here now at Yale. And thank you all again for joining us here and wish you a successful workshop. And give the word to my colleague and friend, Vernon Rapley. Thank you. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name's Vernon Rapley. I'm the Security Director of the Victorian Albert Museum, and I also lead the v and Culture in Crisis program. Um, I bring the apologies of our director, Martin Rort, who sadly is unable to join us today, but will join tomorrow, we hope, uh, if his plane is on time. Uh, and it's, I know he very much would have liked to have been here today to support the efforts and the collaboration uh, with, with Yale. Um, he's truly a, an inspirational character in this field, uh, in the field of cultural heritage protection and preservation. Um, and his support for, for us in the museum and encouragement in the UK uh, to strive for greater things is, is uh, a true uh, inspiration for us. So the Victorian Albert Museum... Um, for those of you who don't know, the museum in London, we attract about three and a half million visitors a year. Uh, we have collections from all over the world, founded in 1853. Um, we are an international museum and becoming more international day by day. We're unbound by national boundaries and are collecting treasures uh, from around the world and valuing them and sharing them uh, to create inspiration in, in design uh, and art. Wherever you come from in the world, if you visit the V&A, we think you will find something both familiar to your own culture and something that will inspire you and you'll find amazing. Um, the V&A is incredibly proud to co-host this second step. And whilst I think it's described as a second step, it's, there's been many smaller steps, maybe many other steps by organisations um, between, um, uh, between these. But these are landmark events, maybe, uh, in that... I think we should continue to drive them forward yearly to bring together uh, experts and to learn uh, from each other. 
Um, we greatly value our partnership with, uh, with Stefan and the Yale um, Institute for the Preservation of Cultural Heritage, and we're grateful again for the support of UNESCO. It's been a year since our last conference, and a lot has happened, um, and I'm pleased to see so many familiar faces and also new participants from around the world, and congratulations, Stefan, for encouraging people and supporting them to, to come to this uh, important event. We have a very busy schedule today, and many of our speakers will sadly describe terrible events, um, but there will also hopefully be messages of help and perseverance to, uh, to inspire us and to drive us forward in our fight. What I learned from the London Conference last year is there are so many people who want to do something. They want to help. There are people that are helping in their own way. And maybe the one common complaint that, that arose then and has continued since is a lack of coordination, a lack of uh, an in too much duplication of effort. And I'm not sure that we will necessarily be able to achieve a great deal of coordination. Um, or to control people in their efforts to support uh, the, the greater work. But what I do believe is that by bringing people together in events like this and working closely together and by understanding what each of us are doing, we can save some of that dupli as duplication at least um, and better understand what each of us can offer. This has been a particular concern for the VNA for the last year, finding a place that we can help, that we can bring our hopeful uh, our experience and our knowledge to bear in a productive way, in a way that is not being dealt with necessarily by other people, by supporting work that is existing and also looking for new ways that we can assist. We have to acknowledge the work of other organisations, the British Museum in particular, Oxford University, people like Peter Stone in the UK, who are doing fantastic work in, in this area. And slowly we have uh, formulated a number of strands of work, and one of them I will describe later on today, it's our most recent thoughts, and it's not without controversy or problems, um, but I'll try and explain a little later how we believe copies in particular, maybe digital copies nowadays, can create a form and a way of saving and preserving cultural heritage for the future. Um, we're also working on a number of other smaller projects, maybe. We are working with the trade and universities in the United Kingdom to set up what might become a gold standard for the behaviour of the trade within the trafficking of cultural goods. We are very keen at this point not to look for draconian legislation or reg regulation, but to look at a way of working with these people um, to ensure that we provide the best possible standard we can and to protect cultural heritage um, from entering the United Kingdom. We're also working with uh, a number of working groups to assist the police and the military in the UK wherever we can. But today, the most important thing is that we learn from you all. Um, we have an excellent program prepared, Stefan, thank you. Um, and I must apologise for being not as involved in the preparation of today's conference as I should have been as co-host. Um, so I apologise for that, Stefan, but you've done an amazing job without, uh, without our assistance in that way. Um, I don't want to take any, any further time. We want uh, to give as much time as possible to, to our speakers. Um, I hope that you all today will find something inspiring to take back uh, and to assist you in fighting the good fight to protect cultural heritage from whatever threats it may face. Uh, and that we all leave here today a little bit better connected and a little bit more understanding of what each other can do and what all of us can offer. Thank you.